brand new lighting setup, so I'm super excited. But what's up guys, my name is Donovan Alexander Beck. Welcome back to the channel. This is something entirely new to me. It's a challenge to myself to want to continue to create more content both on here on YouTube, on Instagram, and every platform. So if you're already here, uh, thank you so, so much for coming along on this journey. But this is going to be something new. It's going to be a way for me to not only share some of the things that I've learned in the creative process, but also learn things from this process to begin with. YouTube is an entirely different realm of creating than what I'm normally used to. For those of you who don't know me, hi, my name is Donovan. This is my channel where all my random ideas go. But I am a photographer and filmmaker based out of Los Angeles, focusing predominantly in travel and documentary filmmaking. And right now, this is my new challenge to myself as... 2020 continues to just exist and yeah um, I have found myself wanting to try something new and creating more for YouTube and more of my own content has been that challenge so these are gonna look like a lot of different things they're gonna look like travel videos they're gonna look like tutorials and gear reviews and things like that but first today we are talking about something to add to your footage to make it just that little more than what you need and i'm so excited to share with you because one of my favorite companies of all time moment has just released this past month two months ago their line of diffusion filters called cine bloom and you've already seen what that does to footage because it's actually being used in this shot right now so let's dive straight into it let's talk about what diffusion is how it can assist your footage and how to use it in the field i'm not going to go super in depth into the technical aspects of holonization and everything like that. I'm going to link Gerald Undone's video to that because he's just the god of technical reviews and knows way more than I could ever share with anybody. Um, so I highly recommend if you want to get into the in-depth stuff, talk about and watch that video. Um, but in this video, we're going to be talking predominantly about on the field, how it works, what it can do to your footage, and how you can use it to get more creative shots, both in photography and in filmmaking. So let's dive straight into it. So before we even start, let's just show you a direct view of what Diffusion does. This is a current shot of my talking head here in the studio with the 20% Cine Bloom Diffusion Filter by Moment. And if I take this off, this is what that same exact shot, not moved at all, looks like without it. Going in depth into what Diffusion Filters do is create a sort of softer and flatter look to your footage. Today's cameras are amazing and today's lenses are even more incredible they are sharp they are pin tack they are these beautiful amalgamations of glass turned into a perfect piece of art but the issue is one our human eyes don't see as sharp as cameras do and our most recommended memories of film aren't sharp when we think of the word cinematic, we think of these bloomy natures of this sort of moody and depth to footage. And that just doesn't come from traditional lenses in the modern age. They are incredibly, incredibly sharp and they can get amazing imagery. But for a lot of cinematography and photography, sometimes we want to harken back to that soft and flat look and the highlights and blooms and lights. And that is what diffusion does. The 20% is equivalent to a near quarter stop to eighth stop black pro mist, which has been the industry standard for diffusion filters over the past five, 10 years. But I like this one just a little bit different because it gives a more flat and pristine look to footage that you can't traditionally get with other diffusion filters. I wanna show you a really, really good way of highlighting what this diffusion filter does in this shot when we kill the key light. And the only thing you get to see is my practical lights to my left and my right. This is the bloom with the Cine Bloom 20%. Look at how there's this holination all around this light and can give this very sort of dynamic feel. If you're shooting with neon lights on the streets or anywhere at night, you're going to get all of these different shots and vibes because of that. But if I take this filter away, this is what it becomes. 
still, in many cases, an amazing shot. And it gives a really good texture to the room. For here, for a talking head shot, having these practical lights gives a little bit more intonation to the scene. And when it's being used here as a sort of rim light to lighten my face just a little bit. However, when we add back the cine bloom, what we get is not only a softer look, but also a more pristine and clean up of not only my facial features, but any facial features you were to use in any of your shots. Let's hop into some actual footage out in the field and let's talk about the differences so you can see them side by side, as well as circumstances to use them in both photography and in filmmaking. So hopping into Lightroom first, we're gonna talk about the looks and vibes that you can get in photography with a diffusion filter, whether it is the Black Pro Mist, the Cine Bloom, or the Hoya diffusion filters, any of these things can give this sort of feel. And for those of you who haven't viewed my photography style before, let me give you a little context. I am a travel and portrait photographer who loves the idea of light and airy feeling throughout all of my photos, as well as giving some sort of dynamic mood to it. If you haven't checked out my Instagram, subtle plug, go check it out at The Mind of Soul on pretty much every social media and you can see a lot of what I'm talking about. But looking into some of these photos, these are all shot with a 20% Sydney Boom filter by moment. And so one thing you can notice, especially here in the highlights, what we're going to be seeing is a lot more diffusion of the light. Similar to how we use key lights behind soft boxes to put light away and across our face to give a sort of soft feel, that is what we're getting with the same filter directly onto our images. And looking into portraits, especially, this is where, for me, this has been an absolute game changer. Traditionally, when I'm editing my photos, I'm giving it a sort of haze and vibe to it. However, being able to do anything in camera before getting into editing can help you out so, so much later down the road. So looking down at one of my most recent portrait sets with Tiana, shout out to Tiana for her birthday is passing, we can see what becomes when we add just that little bit of softening and flatness across an image. This is an edited image, but if I cut it back to before the edit and see that there is a flat nature to this photo. There is a haze and a slight blending of all the lights, especially as the sun is coming down on her side. That is the sort of vibe and essence that we can get from it. And this works in every sort of photography, whether it is landscapes, portrait, travel, fashion, product, anything that you need, just a little bit of smoothing of not only the nature of it, whether it is skin and pores, but also the texture of edges, whether it's an architecture using it on tables and buildings, all these sort of things can benefit from the use of diffusion filters. Now let's hop into videography and see what we can get out of something like this. And honestly, I think this is the best way to example it. This is two of the same shots in the same place but using the diffusion filter and not using it. What you can see inside of the shot is not only how the string lights that are up above flow and vibe and are able to sort of blur out more, similar to what you would see in a very early 90s sort of drama film. It gives this sort of essence to it that you don't traditionally see in the sharp Pentac nature of cameras today. With all that being said, I wanted this video to be short and sweet and talk about a small investment into your photography or your filmmaking gear that can really change up not only how you shoot things, but also the way that they look. Trust me, I fully am aware that sometimes this is way too much. Sometimes these aren't needed. For real estate, for example, I would really lean towards not using diffusion filters because I want to show the clean nature of the, of the buildings that we're shooting. However, but when you need something with this a little bit extra quote unquote cinematic nature to it. Something like the diffusion filters, whether it's the Black Pro Mist, the Cine Bloom, or any other ones, can really add into that feature of your creation, of your film, of your photo. All this is to say is that one, create what you wanna create. For me, this falls directly into my style of shooting and my style of editing and the films that I make. For a lot of other photographers and filmmakers, this may not be needed. But if this is something that you're interested in, I'm going to link down everything to Shot Moment and I'm highly, highly recommending that you check out their work. They are an absolutely amazing group of creatives and filmmakers and artists and designers and make amazing gear and even more amazing YouTube videos. So please go check them out. 
this has been a first for me. I don't know if this really got to anything to you or taught you anything, um, but I hope you at least got to hear me ramble on to myself, I guess. Uh, I'm really excited to continue to create. This is a sort of challenge to myself and for anybody who knows me. I'm a perfectionizer to the simplest of the core. Um, I will perfectionize anything that I create to the day's end. And for me, challenging myself to create YouTube videos like this is a way for me to get past that and just start creating. Um, one of my favorite quotes by a fellow filmmaker is from Matty Hapoya, which is learn, make, and repeat. You have to do all three for it to actually matter. So this is learning, this is making, and we're gonna continue to repeat. If you look in the background, there is the new Ronin SC2 by DJI. Um, that we also got in studio and some of the shots in today's video were actually shot on it um, So I'm excited for our next video to be talking about gimbals and the things that you can do and the amazing things that you can create Using them in cinematography With that being said, if you made it past this point in the video Thank you for surviving this and surviving my rambles um, I wish you the best and I'm so excited to see what you all create If you ever want to link with me or talk about anything all my information is going to be down below this has been the first, and hopefully it's the start of many. Best wishes to you, peace, love, and happiness in all that you do, and as always, much love.